Hello Smart Marketers. In this video, we will try to understand Google Analytics for server-side tracking. We will try to understand what is Google Analytics for server-side tracking and why we need Google Analytics for server-side tracking. See, as of now, I am recording this video. Today is, if you see the date, 21st August 2022. And when as an audience, I will visit this website and if I click on any button of this website, then everything I can track. That means, let's say this is your website, passiveearn.com. And if anyone visit on your website and if they do any event, if they click anywhere, if they scroll down here, then you can track their behavior, you can track their activity. That means you can track them by using Google Analytics 4. And see, this is my Google Analytics 4 dashboard for passiveearn.com. I hope you can see here the domain name passiveearn.com. And see, from here I can track people's activity. Uh, I can track the traffic channel, source, medium, referrals, everything I can track actually. If I want to say about this Google Analytics 4, then it will require a complete another course. But I am not saying much more about Google Analytics 4 right now in this course. But see, the thing that I want to say you that if anyone visit on your website and then if he do any type of work, any type of activity, then you can track all his activities by using this Google Analytics 4. Now, how can you do these things? Just look at this image and here look at this lower portion. See, let's say this is the website user or the website visitor. And through a browser, this visitor has been visited to your website. And whenever the visitor has been visited to your website, the browser will send this data by using the cookie to Google Analytics and Facebook and other traffic channels. In this course, we will focus only to Google Analytics 4. That's why just forget about this facebook and other things just remember about this google analytics that means when a website user will browse on your website through a browser the browser will send data to google analytics 4 and by using cookie technology this phenomenon will happen that means by using cookie technology the browser will send your website visitors data to google analytics 4 and if you see here one news here according to cookiebot.com google chrome browser will not send this type of third party data by using cookie to other platform see they are saying that google has announced that it will stop the use of third party cookies in chrome by the end of 2024 and if you see another news here let me show you see here Another news according to www.bloomberg.com, Google delays phasing out ad cookies on Chrome until 2024. Google said it will delay a plan to phase out third party cookies on its Chrome browser until late 2024. Okay, so that means after 2024, the thing that is happening now, the Chrome browser is sending the third party data of your user to google analytics for by using cookie technology these things will not happen after 2024 that means let me show you with more details here as of now that means before 2024 google chrome can send third party user behavior by using the cookie technology directly to your google analytics but after 2024 Google Chrome will not send this data to your Google Analytics directly by using cookie technology. That means after 2024, you cannot send any third party data by using cookie technology from your browser to Google Analytics. I hope you get idea guys, why Google Analytics 4 individually is not enough. That's why we need Google Analytics for server side tracking. Now let me delete. So our this path this road is now blocked after 2024 this road will be blocked let me block it again let's say here i'm blocking see 
this road will be blocked after 2024 then what will be the marketing strategy of your business how can you track your user behavior or your customers behavior on your website after 2024 and to do that guys we need this google analytics for server side tracking and see here what is happening this road is blocked after 2024 so definitely you have to create one another bypass road see here is our bypass road i hope you can see that means when the website user or website visitor will visit to your website by using any browser then your website will send the data of your visitor to a cloud server see this is the server and this server will send the data to your google analytics that means after 2024 your browser will not send the data of your website user or of your website visitor directly to google analytics 4 so what will happen then your website will send the data of your website visitor to one cloud server and this cloud server will send the data to your google analytics 4 i hope you get idea guys why we need google analytics for server side tracking see this is our server and because of this server the name of this thing is server side tracking that means we are tracking our user by using this server see after 2024 we cannot track our user data directly from browser so what we will need to do in this time we will need to use one cloud server so that by using this cloud server we can get all our user data these are the things guys i hope you get idea about this google analytics for server side tracking why we need this google analytics for server side tracking and how much important it is i hope you get idea because if you cannot track your user behavior then definitely you cannot retarget them if you cannot retarget them then your business will not be scaled and if you are a business owner and definitely you will need to learn how to set up this google analytics for server side tracking but if you are not a business owner but if you are a freelancer or solo planner then also you will need to learn this skill because in future there will be a lot of opportunity to work on this sector because the businesses will need to set up google analytics for server side tracking on their website so definitely they will hire people and on marketplace like fiverr upwork and other international marketplace the demand of this skill will increase day by day in future i hope you get idea guys about this uh, google analytics for server side tracking why you need to learn this skill how important it is so if you think guys this skill is really need for you then i will recommend you please join this course in this course i will teach you guys how you can set up google analytics for server side tracking step by step and point by point so i hope this course will be very interesting and very knowledgeable for you and very unique for you so you are cordially invited to join this course guys and i am hoping that you will join this course thank you so much guys for watching this video Hello smart marketers, in this video I will discuss about how Google Analytics server side tracking works. I hope you have got a basic understanding about Google Analytics for server side tracking and if I summary the previous video, you cannot send your user data directly from your browser to Google Analytics 4. You have to 
create one another storage that we mentioned here as cloud server that means you have to send your third party user data to your cloud server and through this cloud server you have to send this data to google analytics 4. in this video we will understand how these things will work that means how google analytics 4 server side tracking will work and see just look at this image let me increase the size of this image from here and then see they have two container and the first container here that you are seeing this is one web container and this is another container this container name is server container that means you have to create one web container and then you have to create another server container now what is this container in this course i have mentioned that this course is for the person who already know google analytics 4 and google tag manager and that's why i will not explain what this container is i assume that you know what this container is so the thing is you have to create one web container here and you have to create another server container and then you have to connect this web container to your server container and then this server container will be connected with your cloud server see here is the cloud server and then this cloud server will send data to your google analytics 4 and here see this cloud server will send data to your google analytics 4 or any other tracking tools that you are using now what this cloud server this cloud server can be two types as of now google have its own cloud server guys also there have another cloud server name is step.io you can use here guys google's cloud server to track your server side by using google analytics 4 also but in this course we will learn how you can set up google analytics 4 server side tracking by using step.io and the process is almost same guys if you understand one system then you can basically implement these things on another system also so if you understand how you can implement google analytics for server side tracking by using this step.io then you will also get idea how you can use this google cloud platform so these are the things but in this course we will focus on this step io that means we will implement our google analytics for server side tracking by using step.io why we are using step.io if you go to this pricing section see they have a free plan and i think most of the student who will um, do this course they are not so much interested to purchase a plan before earning something by using this course that's why i'm using here step.io so that you can use this free plan and then by using this free plan you can learn this strategy how you can set up google analytics for server side tracking and when you will learn this skill then definitely by using this skill you can also set up google analytics for server side tracking by using google's own cloud server and the process is almost same guys so these are the things i hope you get idea if you have any question then let me know in the comment section or in the question section if you have any question just type the question i will answer your question as soon as possible Thank you so much guys for watching this video and I hope you have understood how Google Analytics 4 server set tracking will work.
Hello smart marketers, in this video I will show you what are the things that you will need to set up Google Analytics for server side tracking and see here you will need one step.io account or one Google Cloud Server account and you will need one GTM web container, you will need one GTM server container and you will need one Google Analytics 4 account. Also on which platform you can practice this uh, course basically or these things basically you can practice it on WordPress, on Shopify and also on Laravel or any other PHP site. In this course at first we will explore this WordPress that means we will set up our Google Analytics for server side tracking on WordPress site and then later we will focus on Shopify site also but at first we will learn how we can set up our Google Analytics for server side tracking on WordPress site and to do that we will use this website see spacetravelo.com this website i will use to show you how you can set up these things on your wordpress website and it's an e-commerce website it's a complete and very beautiful e-commerce website so we will implement these things on this spacetraveler.com website basically so these are the things now if i recap what things you will need see you will need one gtm web container one gtm server container one google analytics 4 account and you will need one escape.io account or google cloud server account and you will need at first the wordpress platform and then when i will teach you on shopify platform then you will need one shopify website basically for practice so these are the things and here one another thing i want to clarify guys see there have escape.io account or google cloud server account so you will need one step.io account in this course we will use this step.io account see this is step.io account but in your case if you want you can also use the google cloud server account but in case you want to use google's cloud server account in this case you have to add your credit card that's why i am using here step.io so that without using any credit card and without paying any amount of money you can practice by using this free plan see uh, they will um, give you 10,000 requests for free in this plan so by using this free plan we will learn this google analytics for server side tracking but when you will work for your client or when you will set up google analytics for server side tracking for your website professionally then definitely you will have to pay and you can use in this case google cloud server account and step.io account anything that you want or anything that will be easier for you but if you learn one platform then you can also implement these things on another platform also i hope you get idea guys what are the requirement things that you will need to set up a complete google analytics for server side tracking thank you so much guys for watching this video and in the upcoming video we will set up these um, things basically we will set up our step.io account we will set up our gtm web and server container and we will set up our google analytics for account thank you so much guys Hello guys, as our requirement at first we will need one GTM web container. So in this video, I will show you how you can create your GTM web container. So here you have to create the web container on tag manager. So just search here tag manager. And then you will get this tag manager.google.com this website. So enter to this website.
then you will get an interface like that and from here if you have multiple uh, google account then make sure that you have been selected your main google account where you want to set up your tag manager basically so see this is my tag manager on google and in your case if you are complete new then you will not see these accounts basically see these are three containers that i have been created and similarly to create more container you have to click on this create account so these are the things and now what we want to do we want to create one web container on gtm or on google tag manager so this is my google tag manager and then just click here create account here give the company name let's say the company name is space travelo and here select the country in my case i'll select here my country in your case you have to select your country here and then here give the site url www.spacetravelo.com in my case see this is the website spacetravelo.com you can copy it also from here and then you can also paste it here but you have to make sure that you will not include any https or slash so you have to delete this slash and https but you can give here www. so these are the things now what we are creating guys we are creating here one web container see here i have been mentioned web so you have to select here web see here have web ios android amp server so you have to select here web because we are creating here web container right also you can give here the name let's say container name is www.spacetraveler.com and then let's say web container you can mention it here and then select web so we are creating here on web container and then just click here on this create and here select your language and then here accept the terms and condition and then click on this yes and then your container will be created okay i hope it has been created see the container has been created and then you will get a code like that if you use wordpress then you will not need to use this code basically but if you use um, any other php site or any other custom coded site then you will need to use this code so you can cut this code from here and see here have our google tag manager code if you click on this code then again you will get this code basically so in any case if you need this code then just click on this code here see i hope you can see the code and then just click here and then you will get back your code also so these are the things i hope you get idea how you can create your web container on google tag manager and in this way at first you have to create your google tag manager web container and you have to make sure that here you have submitted after creating just click here submit and here give a name of the version let's say gtm web container created and then just publish it so it has been published guys so these are the things in this way you have to create your gtm web container i hope you get idea if you do not understand anything make sure that you have questioned it thank you so much guys for watching this video and you are welcome for the next tutorial video hello guys in this video i will show you how you can create one step.io account because as our requirement we need one step.io account now 
in the previous video we have been created one gtm web container so to create the step.io account you have to enter to their website this is their website see step.io i will give the link of this site in the resources section of this video also and after coming to this website just click on this pricing section and here you will get this fee option just click here try for fee and by using this fee option you will get access of their complete feature and up to 10,000 action you can use this step.io for free and it's enough for our practice and it's completely enough to learn this skill basically i think so these are the things here you have to enter your uh, email basically so let me enter my email this is my email and then just click here sign up and then they are saying that mail sent check your mailbox and come back so if i check the mail this is the mail that i have been added guys and see here in the promotion section i have gotten one email from a step so you have to just click here on this set password so i'm clicking on this set password guys and then i will get this um, option basically or this interface i will get see here i have to set up the password so let me enter one password here let's say this is my password and then just click here on this save password so the password has been um, added guys and our account um, creation has been done so these are the things i hope you get idea in this way you can create one step.io account i will give the link of this site in the resource section of in this video also so that you can get access of this website so quickly In the previous videos, we have been created our GTM web container and step.io account. In this video, I will create one GTM server container. So let me create the GTM server container. To create the GTM server container, you have to go to the Google Tag Manager and see we are under the web container that we have been created. See, a space travel web container that we have been created previously. And from here, go to admin section let me go to this admin section and from here just click here on this plus icon see in the container section we have to click on this plus icon and then here give the name of the container the name is www.spacetravelo.com and it's server container right so server container and this one is server container so we have to select here server and then just click here create so our server container has been created already guys and then you will get an interface like that guys here in case if you want to use the google cloud server then you have to select this first one and then you have to click on this automatically provision tagging server but in our case we are setting manually we are using step.io if you use step.io also you have to select the second one and you have to copy this text from here make sure that you have been copied this code and then you have been closed this window basically before copying this uh, code do not close this window and after copying keep this code in a saved place let's say i will 
save it here. In your case, you have to keep this code in a safe place and then you can close it. So our server container has been created. Now we have to submit it. Let's say a space travelo server container. Okay. And then just publish it. So our server container has been created. And in this way, you have to create your server container. Hello guys, as our requirement, the next option that we need is one Google Analytics 4 account. In our previous videos, we have been created GTM web container, step.io account and GTM server container. In this video, I will show you how you can create one Google Analytics 4 account. So just search your Google Analytics. And then you will get this URL analytics.google.com. Just enter here. So here is my Google Analytics account, guys. And I have already created some account here. See, there have two accounts, and I have some property. In your case, if you are a complete beginner or if your account is completely new, then you will get here something new interface. But the thing is, you have to create one Google Analytics for account but make sure that you haven't created here google universal analytics account you have to create here google analytics for account now how can you differentiate between these two accounts see this is one google analytics for account and there have only account column and property column and if i select this last one then you will get three columns see account column property column and view column so if you get this three column that means you are in google universal analytics you cannot use google universal analytics in this case you have to use one google analytics for account guys so what you have to do you have to just click on the google analytics for account basically you can upgrade to google analytics for from google universal analytics if i come to this google universal analytics then here i have already upgraded but in your case you will see here one option by which you can upgrade your Google Universal Analytics account to Google Analytics 4 account. So I am going to this Google Analytics 4 account, guys. I will not discuss a lot about Google Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4 in this course because this course is not completely beginner friendly course. I have um, assumed that you are a little experienced about Google Analytics 4 and Google Universal Analytics and Google Tag Manager also. The summary is you have to create one Google Analytics 4 account and on Google Analytics 4 account, you will get two columns. See, there have account column and property column. So these are the things. And from here, just click here, create account. And then here, insert the name of your account. Let's say I'll give the name is space Travelo Google Analytics 4 account. Then here, select these things if you want. And then click here next. Here, give the property name. Let's say the name is a space Travelo, then GA4, and here you can change the country if you want. In my case, I will change it to my country, and my time zone will be changed automatically. You can change the currency also, and then click here next and select these things if you want from here, and then just click here create. Here you have to accept their terms and conditions, and then just click here i accept then it will be created so okay let me scroll down these things 
okay there have another terms and condition guys i'm sorry so you have to accept two terms and condition here one terms and condition and here another terms and condition and then just click here i accept so the google analytics for account has been created now here you have to select web why because we are creating this google analytics for account for our website right if you create any google analytics for account for android app or for ios app then you have to select these two things but we are creating this google analytics for account for our this space travel website right that's why we will select here web after selecting web here insert the website url let's say i'll insert www.spacetravelo.com and here you can give the name space travelo stream and then just click here on this create a stream and then you will get an interface like that we have to use this measurement id and in the next videos we will use this measurement id guys but do not click here on this cross icon keep it as it is and then we will use it after some time and this video is in here hello guys welcome so as our requirement we have been set up our gtm web container step.io account we have set up our gtm server uh, container and we have already created our google analytics for account and you will need one platform and in the first section of this course we will use wordpress and as you can see this is my wordpress website you have to manage one wordpress website to learn this skill basically and to practice so this is my wordpress website so these are the things as our requirement we have been fulfilled all our requirements now i will show you what are the steps that you have to do see here i have been retained all the steps and uh, in future i will also add here more steps and i will share this document in the resource section of this course you will get this document and you can use this document it will help you to set up the google analytics for server side tracking step by step so these are the things so see in our first step you have to connect gtm web container with your website okay so at first you have, we have to connect our gtm web container with our website right so that's why i will go to my google tag manager and see here is my google tag manager and here see under this space travel or name which is the name of my website i have two container the first one is server container and the last one is web container so in our first step what we have to do we have to connect our web container with our website right so that's why we will go to this gtm or google tag manager and then we will enter to this web container make sure that you haven't entered to this server container you have to enter to, to this web container so I'm clicking here on this web container guys let me click and see here I you can just click here and see here I have been selected the web container so make sure that you have been selected the web container and then here you will get the GTM code so just copy this GTM code from here let me copy this GTM code let me copy this GTM code after copying this GTM code you have to go to the back end of your website so let me go to my website and see here is the back end of my website let me go to the back end of my website 
and here you have to install one plugin so from here go to plugin and click on add new here you have to search basically gtm4 wp and see here is the plugin you have to install this plugin here and then activate this plugin after installing and activating this plugin see i have already activated this plugin then go to the setting and then here you have to give the tag manager id now what this tag manager id if you go to your tag manager and if you go to your web container and then here is your id basically see this is the id so you have to copy this id let me copy again you have to select this id and then you have to copy this id after copying here you have to just enter this id so these are the things and you have to make sure that container code on and here you have to make sure that footer of the page has been selected and then just click here save changes so our gtm web container and our website has been connected now now how can you detect if the connection has been completed completely you have to go to the front end of your website let me reload it and then here there have one extension you have to use this extension see the name of the chrome extension is tag assistant legacy by google make sure that you have installed this extension and then if you just click here and then if you enable it after enabling if you reload it now let me reload it let me reload it again and now if you just click on this extension again here see they're saying that no tag found but i think our setup has been done see i have clicked on save changes so it will sometime take some time to um, set up basically but our setup has been done and here we will see all the um, code basically that has been set up on this website let me reload it again and now if i click here so nothing they can found so after some time i will check it and then i will show you if the setup has been done it will take some time after setting up hello guys in the previous step we have been connected our gtm web container with our website in this step we have to connect our gtm server container with our cloud server and as cloud server we are using in this course step.io that means in the second option or in the second step we have to connect our gtm server container with step.io and we have done our first step previously so let me tick here to set up it you have to go to step.io account this step.io account we have been created previously guys and from here you have to go to this sgtm option so i'm clicking here on this sgtm option after that just click here on this create container see they have one option create container so i'm clicking here and then here give the name of your container let's say the container name is space travelo and here you have to enter your container configuration now what this container configuration is i hope you can remember when we have been created our gtm server container then we have gotten one code and this code i have been stored in this 
txt file i have said you to store this code so we have to use this code now you have to just copy this code and then you have to enter this code from here and then you can here enable custom domain and global cdn if you have and then here you have to select your subscription type in our case it's free and then just click here create so i'm clicking here on this create button guys let me see what will happen then then you will get on interface like that guys and here you will see it's running but here one thing you have to do see there have tagging server url you have to copy this url from here let me copy it sorry you do not have to click you have to just click on this copy button then it will be uh, copied basically and then you have to go to your google tag manager then you have to enter to your gtm server container see i have been entered to my gtm server container you do not have to enter to your gtm web container guys now you have to enter to your gtm server container and after entering you just click here on this admin option and then here click on this container setting and then here you have to add the url just click here add url and then paste the url that you have been copied and then click here on this save so our setup has been done already guys now if i go to the step account and then if i reload it then it has been done i think so if i go to the sgtm container again so it's running guys you can also check it from google tag manager if you again enter here on this container setting then let me see see here um, I am getting the container configuration code. So by using this code, they are now connected. I hope you get idea guys in this way. You have to connect your Google Tag Manager server container with your cloud server, which is our second option. See, connect GTM server container with our cloud server. So our second step has been done also. So I'm taking here. So these are the things I hope you have understood this tutorial guys. Hello guys, our next step is set up Google Analytics for server side tag and trigger with GA4 client in server container. So we have to do it in server container and we have to set up GA4 client with our GA4 server side tag and trigger. So this step is some complex, but I will make sure that it would be easy for you. So at first we have to go to your server container why because we have to do this whole step inside our server uh, container right so that's why i'm going to this google uh, tag manager and then i will go to outside basically and then i will enter to this server container see i'm selecting here the server container so see here is the server container i hope you can see this is my server container and here see have clients option so if you do not see this clients option then this is not your server container server container means guys you must have one clients option so see this is a clients option and see there have google analytics for client we are not using here universal analytics right we are using here google analytics for clients and the name of the google analytics for client is GA4 
so just remember this name guys we will use this name soon in this video but before using this name we have to use one variable so i'm going to this variable section and then just click here configure and from here select this client name because we will need this client name here see this client name has been added here after adding this variable now we have to insert one trigger just go to this trigger and then click here new and then click here trigger configuration select custom and select some event and here select client name we have to select a client name guys why because in the clients option we have one client name right and in variables also we have added our client name variable and here let's say client name and here will be equals not contains guys here will be equal why because in the client section we have one client and what is the name of the client the name was ga4 right so the name was ga4 i hope you can remember here in this client section there had two clients universal analytics and google analytics 4 and in this course we are using google analytics 4 that's why we are using here ga4 i hope you get idea and then just click here save okay we have to give here one name sorry guys so let's say i'll give one name here let's say the name is client name ga4 and then just click here save and then it will be saved see here equal g4 why guys because see in client section we have this g4 let me enter to this client section see they have g4 so client name will be equal to g4 i hope you get idea guys see client name equals g4 that i have been selected here after that here you have to create one tag so just go to this tag section and then here click on new here click on this tag configuration and here you have to select google analytics 4 that means in this section we have to connect our google analytics 4 basically with our gtm server so i'm selecting here guys google analytics ga4 you have to select here google analytics ga4 you must not select here google analytics universal analytics guys we are working here with geo4 right that's why i will select here and you will also select here google analytics ga4 so after setting up you will get here these things and here you have to insert the measurement id now how you will get this measurement id i hope you can remember in the video where we have been created our google analytics 4 account here we have gotten this interface and i have said you to store this code so we will need this code in this uh, section guys so i have to copy this code here just click here copy and then here you have to paste it this is your measurement id basically and here keep everything uh, false and then here in event you have to select here event name and you do not have to give anything in event parameter user properties and advanced setting in trigger section you have to select here the client name ga4 that you have been set up in the trigger section so our tag has been created now here you have to give one name of this tag let's say the name is uh, maybe you can give server side ga4 configuration you can give any name basically and then just click here save so our tag has been created guys see this is our tag it's done but you have to make sure that you have been submitted it so i'm clicking here submit and let's say i'll give a name j4 let's say it's j4 server side configuration and then i'll publish it and in this video i haven't uh, discussed about tag triggers variable guys i'm assuming that you know what is tag triggers and variable um, because to do this course you have to 
have some basic knowledge about Google Analytics for about Google Tag Manager. So definitely you uh, must have knowledge about this tag trigger variable. But these are the whole process, guys. I hope you get idea in this way. You have to do this last step that is basically set up Google Analytics server side tag and trigger with Google Analytics for client in server container. So our this step has been done also. So these are the things, guys. Hello there, our account setup has been done and today we will start our tracking. So as of now, in these steps, we have been set up our accounts basically that we need in case of our J4 server side tracking. And today we will start our e-commerce tracking procedure. Now if I go to the um, Google Analytics, see this is Google Analytics. I'm visiting this space travel website here. See, I'm visiting here, right? But if I go to this analytics, see, there is no data. But if I go to my website, www.pacivan.com from here, let's say I will go to this website and here you will see a lot of data. Let it be load. See, here you are seeing some data, right? see there you are seeing some data but if we go to this space travel and from here if i go to this space travel property then let it be load and here you are seeing no data and they are they are saying that no data received from your website yet so in this section of this course we will set up these things by which we can see this data here and to do that i have been set up my steps here guys if i go to here see here one step is ga4 config tag or page view event in web container and send to gtm server container that means now we want to set up the page view event in ga4 server container and to do that at first you have to go to your google tag manager and from here you have to select your web container guys and see there we have two containers server container and web container remember that we have to select here web container so i'm selecting here web container and let it be load see this is the web container and after coming to this web container here you have to select one tag just click here on this add new tag let it be load guys and then here give a name of your tag let's say the name is ga4 let's say ga4 then server side then page view you can give any name depending on your need guys and then just click here on this tag configuration and here you have to select google analytics ga4 config so let me select here GA4 configuration and then here there will be a little twist guys. Here they are asking us for the measurement ID. How you will get this measurement ID? I hope you can remember we have gotten our measurement ID from our Google Analytics 4 account. If you can't remember then just go to your admin section and from here go to your data stream and then 
again click here on your website name and here is the measurement id right so this is our right measurement id let me copy it and then let me go to this google anal oh sorry google tag manager and let me paste it and what does that mean if i paste this code to this field that means if i go to this page that means the website will send all the data directly to our google analytics right but what we want to do here we do not want to send our website data directly to our google analytics we want to send our data to our cloud server and from the cloud server we want to send the data to our google analytics for right that's why here if i go to this google tag manager here we will not submit our real google analytics for measurement id see this is the measurement id we will not submit this id here so what we will do here if we submit here something random let's say i if i submit here maybe these things then what will happen then maybe it's someone others uh, google analytics for measurement id that's why we will add here some random measurement id that is not available that's why let's say you can give here one 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 this type of code you can give which is not true and see there have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten um, symbol that is available that's why we will give here 10 symbol and i have submitted here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so here you have to submit a fake measurement id guys it's very important and i hope you understood why we are submitting here fake um, measurement id after that what we want to do we do not want to send our website data directly to our google analytics that's why we have submitted here our fake measurement id now what do we want to do we want to send our website data to our cloud server right and how we want to do that by using our server side tracking that's why see there have another option send to server container we have to select it and then here we have to give the server container url and this server container url we will get on our step dot uh, io account and from here if i enter to this space travel container here we will get the url and see this is the server url let me copy it so i have been copied it guys and then here let me paste it see this is the container url after that we have to set up on field just click here on this set to field and here click on add row and here you have to insert on field name and this field name you will get on this lesson 4 docs I will give this lesson for dog guys in the uh, resource section of this video and from here just copy this parameter see first party collection let me copy it from here and then let me insert it here just copy and paste it and the value will be true and here see I have been set up the value just copy it and then just submit it as true so these are the things i hope you get idea guys after that we have to set up here uh, triggering here just click here triggering and we'll set here all pages and then i'll just save it let me save it so our things has been done now we have to submit it let me submit it and let's say the name is ga4 server side Base view event and then let me publish it okay so it has been done guys i hope um, you have understand in this way we have to set up our google analytics for server side tracking page view event these are the things guys now let me go back and okay i have been um, going to outside so this is the uh, web container guys so these are the things our things has been set up now let me go to google analytics 4 and from here if i go to home let's see if i get any data let me go to home and here 
I'm not getting any data yet guys so let me visit the website see this is the website if I click some thing from here if I click on some page if I visit some page let me visit some page then maybe the data will be triggered to Google Analytics for but sometime it can take some time but it's okay after setting up it can take some time now I will pause the video now I will stop the video now and I will come back after some time and record it again and I will show you if everything okay or not so let me reload it just one time okay so we are not seeing any data here that's okay I hope in the next video I will show you the data. Thank you. Now I will show you how you can check whether our setup is right or wrong. To check it, see there have another button preview. Just click here preview. Let me click on this preview button. And here insert your website URL. See this is the website URL spacetravelo.com and then just click here on this connect. And then here you have to do the event and we have set up our page view event right. That means we have to um, scroll our site now. That means we will do our page view event now. See this is the event happening right. This is the page view I am watching this page and if I watch another page just click on any link see this is another page and I have seen two page right that's why I see here I'm seeing fired and see fired two times I am I have seen here two pages that's why it's fired two times that means this GA4 server side page view tag is firing guys and if you see your tag is firing that means your setup is correct these are the things guys I hope you get idea in this way you have to check whether your setup is right or wrong so these things are right so let me cross it and this is our Google Analytics uh, 4 server side tracking page view event and if I go to Google Analytics 4 see this is Google Analytics 4 let me reload it and let's see we can if we can see data see we can see data here sorry so reloading is not necessary before reloading we can see data but I have been reloaded it let it be load and here see and now I am seeing data here that means user per minute see this is the data and previously I haven't seen any data here so our page view event has been set up guys I hope you can remember and see it's saying that it may take up to 24 hours to appear in your uh, analytics account so in your case uh, it may take up to 24 hours to appear your analytic but in this website uh, it has not taken 30 minutes also but in your case it can happen that after your setup process it can take up to 24 hours to set up uh, or to show the analytics on your analytics dashboard these are the things guys i hope you understood the full procedure and if you have any question then let me know in the comment section
hello there in this video i'll show you how you can enable data layer of your website and in this video i'll show you specifically how you can enable the data layer of wordpress site and if i record the shopify part then i will show you how you can enable the data layer on shopify also but this tutorial is a part of google analytics 4 basically this tutorial is not a part of this ga4 server side tracking but this part or this data layer enabling part is very essential part that's why i'm showing you again but as the requirement of this course is to learn google analytics 4 and google tag manager previously that's why i think you know already how to enable data layer still i'm showing you how you can enable data layer why we need to enable data layer because if you see we have done our first step but in our next four step we need to enable data layer see our next step is view item event setup and our third uh, step is add to cart event setup and if we want to set up this type of event we definitely need to enable data layer that's why i am creating this video so that you can enable the data layer and here i have created one documentary and i will share this in documents guys on the resource section you can get this resource and also i'll show you how you can enable so without wasting time let's enable at first go to the back end of your wordpress website and then from here you have to go to your google tag manager plugin see here is the google tag manager plugin i hope you can remember we have installed this plugin on our wordpress website back end and after installing this plugin you have to come to this plugin setting and then from here you have to go to integration and then just click here WooCommerce then here you will get one option track enhanced e-commerce just enable this option and then just scroll down and save the changes it's very easy to set up in WordPress and this is the complete tutorial you have to just go to your Google Tag Manager plugin setting and then you have to go to your integration option then you have to go to your WooCommerce option here let me go and then you have to just enable this track enhanced e-commerce this uh, option these are the things in this way you can enable the data layer on your wordpress website and there have different procedure how you can enable the data layer on shopify website i will show you these things after uh, some time when i will record the shopify part of this course thank you hello there in this video i will show you how you can set up the view item event that means if anyone visit to your website and if anyone visit to any specific product page by setting up this event we can also track these things that this person have visited only this specific product let's say one person has visited this product k r y o x 26 mtb model k so let me visit here so whenever someone will visit on any specific product page or a specific item page we want to track them this is our view item tracking here in this step we will set up gf4 view item event in web container and send to gtm server container that means we are going to set up here view item event now how to do these things you have to go to your google tag manager and then you have to go to your web container make sure that you are in web container at first we will create one trigger just go to your trigger option okay but before going to trigger we have to get our data layer so at first click here on this preview 
on your whip container and then here insert your website url and then just click here on this connect button so let me click the connect button and then it will redirect you to your website so this is our website right but here we have to fire the tags basically but let let us let us wait some time see it's, it's still loading see our tag has been fired so these are the things now here we have to get one specific uh, option which is view item not view item list we have to get here view item now how will we get this i option you have to visit to any product or any item let's say this is one of our item so let me visit here let me visit on this item and then we will see here view item option let it be load guys so it has been loaded now let wait some time and hopefully you will find it so it's still loading I'm not sure why I'm not seeing here any view item. There's uh, saying here can't connect to website. Reopen. Okay, let me reopen it, guys. Let me reopen it. Sometimes this type of problem can happen. And then let it be load again. And then let me visit to a item. And this website is little bit slow guys i'm extremely sorry because of it so let me visit to an item and then let me see if i can get the view item option here so guys here see view item see this is the view item i hope you can see now we have to get this view item and then just select this view item and then go to your data layer and from here you will see all the data of this specific um, product or a specific item basically we have to use this data layer in this uh, video or in this tutorial that's why i have enabled it now i will go to google tag manager web container let me go to the google tag manager web container let me find it see this is the google tag manager web container and we have to create one trigger at first so just click here on this trigger and then click here on this new then give a name of this trigger let's say the name is ga4 server side view item trigger and then here click on this trigger configuration and from here you have to get one custom event and here you have to give the event name now what is our event name see our event name is this view item right this view item you will get this text here also see here i have been uh, written everything for you see here is the event name let's say that i'll copy it from here event item sorry not event name event item see here is the event item why i'm copying this text because here if i go to tag manager see here the event name is view item i hope you can see guys this is our view item and then we have to copy this view item also you can write it from your hand and then we have to insert this item here then just save it from here click here save and then the trigger will be saved we will use it after some time let me submit it let's say ga4 server side view event trigger and then publish it after that we have to create one variable so just go to this variable option and then from here click new and then here give a name of the variable 
and I have written the variable name here also. Let's say I will copy it. You can give any name, but I will give this name here, and then I will paste this name here. So these are the things, and then here you have to configure the variable. Just click here, configure, and then from here, uh, let me find it where it is. We have to enable this data layer variable. So just click here, data layer variable, and then here you have to insert the data layer variable name. And I have written the data, uh, data layer variable name here. You can copy and paste it, but I'll show you why I am giving this name here. So let me copy and paste it at first. See e-commerce dot items. Why I am giving here e-commerce dot item? Because if I go to Google Tag Manager, see here is view item, right? Now from this data layer, we are here tracking our items, right? So here is the item. So we are tracking this name here, but this item is under e-commerce. See, let me scroll up. See, here is e-commerce, and under this e-commerce, this item option is situated, right? That's why we are giving here e-commerce dot item. I hope you get idea. E-commerce dot items or item. Let me see it. Items maybe yes items see items so you have to be careful here items so these are the things in this way you have to here insert the data layer variable name and then just click here save and it will be saved guys so we have created one variable for our e-commerce items right and similarly you can create any type of variable let's say you want to here find the currency or you want to attack the price of the product so how to do that you have to create one new variable again just click here new and then here insert the variable name let's say the variable name is will be this one e-commerce currency not item here currency and then here configure the variable here select data layer variable and here you have to give the data layer variable name how to insert this variable name you have to find where is currency see this is currency right this is currency and this currency is under this e-commerce right so here will be e-commerce dot currency so let me copy it from here and here i will give e-commerce and then one little dot and then we have to find this one currency so in this way you can track basically anything from this data layer not only the item not only the currency anything you can track see there have a lot of information you can track any information that you want basically from this data layer you can you know, track the item id you can track the item name you can track the item price anything you can track i hope you get idea guys so i'm giving you this little example but i hope you have understood it so these are the things and then just click here save so it will be saved guys now we have to create one tag just go to this tags option and then here click on new then here click on tag configuration and then here we are setting up one ga4 event right that's why we will select here google analytics ga4 event and then here we have to configure the tag and in our previous video we have configured it and then here we have to select the ga4 uh, server side page view configuration that we have been set up previously and here we have to insert the event name now what is the event name i have saved on this doc also the event name is view item you can copy it from here also you can see it from google tag manager see our uh, na item name is view item right so you can also write it view item here i hope you can see also i have added it on our resource on our document so these are the things i have been copied it i will just paste it this is our event name i hope you get idea guys now we have to insert here two parameters just click here event parameter and here click on add draw and again add draw now we have to insert here parameter name and value in the parameter section we have to insert what we want to track at first we want to track the item right that's why i have written here see items at first we have to give here the parameter name items why i am giving here items because if i go to this detailer option here have items right and we want to track these items that's why in parameter i will give item and sorry not item here items there will be one 
is right because in our data layer there have items not item it's very important guys to be correct and then they are we have to select the value so just click here we have created the value previously see here is our value e-commerce items that we have been set up and if you want also to track the currency then you have to just copy and paste this parameter from here see here is the currency right so just copy it and then here paste it and then here you have to give the value and the value we have been set up here e-commerce currency just enable it and then here select the trigger and then we have to select the j 4 ss view item because whenever someone will view any item from our website we want to track them right and then here give a name let's say the name will be j4 server side view item and then tag and then just save it so it has been saved guys then we will submit it let me submit ga4 let me give a name here ga4 server side view item event and then publish it so it has been pu published guys now let me go back let me go back from here okay here our process is done now we will check whether our process has been set up correctly or not so let me delete these things now here i will go to preview mode again just click here preview to check whether our setup is right or wrong and then here insert your website url and then just click here on this connect so here see our j4 page view event has been fired but j4 view item event event has not been fired yet why because we haven't visited on a specific page yet so if i visit to this page this is one specific item page let me visit see this is one specific item page right and let me visit to another page this is another item page or product page so i have visited uh, two item page now if i go here see this view item event also has been fired that means our setup is right so these are the things guys in this way you can check whether your tags are firing or not i hope you get idea guys if you have any question let me know in the uh, question answer section thank you so much hello there in this video we are going to learn how we can set up ga4 add to cart event that means let's say this is our website if anyone click here on this add to cart button then we want to track him so how can we do these things in this video we will learn it these are the things guys now to do that at first you have to go to your google tag manager and you have to make sure that you are in your web container you are not in your server container and from here you have to create one trigger at first just go to this trigger section let me go to this trigger section so this is our trigger section here click on new trigger and then give a name of your trigger let's say the name is ga4 server side add to card 
trigger you can give any name guys and then just click here trigger configuration and from here we have to select custom event now here we have to give our event name now in our previous video i have shown you that how you can get the event name i hope you can remember still i am showing you again we have to get access of our data layer right and to get access of our data layer we have to go to google tag manager and we have to enable the preview and by enabling the preview we can get access of our data layer so let me insert here my website url and after inserting i will just click here connect and then let me connect it and then let me show you the event name so this is our website let it be load guys so it has been loading guys and here we are getting it and the tags are firing right now we want to track add to cart right so let me click here add to cart whenever i will click here add to cart then here see this event name you will see so now if i click here then our event name is basically this add to cart so we have to copy it i have also uh, mentioned it here if you see if you go to the resource section you will get this pdf and you can also copy and paste this thing from here but i want to show you the actual process how you can get this event name how you can get this thing you can also copy and paste this event name from here but if you want to get it from the data layer then what you have to do that i have been shown here you have to get access of data layer and then from here you have to copy the event name so these are the things guys now we will insert this event name here let me paste it so these are the things i hope you get idea guys in this way we, we have to set up the trigger and then let me save it so the trigger has been saved see we have created here ga4 server side add to cart trigger now we have to create one tags so let me go to this tag section and then click here on this new now here one thing you have to understand guys we want to track here add to cart button right that means if anyone click on the add to cart button then we want to track them and their activity now what actually we want to track we want to track the products name and the price that means let's say this is our website and let's say if anyone click here on this fast ones add to cart we want to track the name see here is the name of the product i hope you get idea and here is the price of the product so we want to track the name of the product and price of the product if anyone click on the add to cart button these are the things guys and now if i go to this tag manager here we have to set up the tag let me configure the tag and from here let me select here google analytics for ga4 event ga4 server side page view we have to select it and then here we have to give the event name now what is the name of the event we have gotten it add to cart right so let me copy it again from here and then let me paste it here and then here we have to insert two event parameter why two because what we want to track guys we want to track the product name and product price so product name is one parameter and product price is another parameter that's why we will add here two parameter just click here add row and again add row and here you have to give the parameter name now what will be the parameter name i have mentioned it here see the parameter name first one will be items why items i will show you guys if i go to the data layer let me go to the data layer section and here if i go to this data layer here you will see the items let me find see here is the items see i hope you can see guys here is the items now we want to track the name of the product right see this name is available under these items right that's why we will track here items if we track items then we will get all these options basically we can track all this option but our main focus is here to track this name only so these are the things let me here copy these items also you can copy it from here also i have added it on my resource then you can also get access of this resource and then you can basically copy it from here 
so these are the things let me paste it here items make sure that it not item it items and here the first alphabet must be lower case guys see here i i hope you can see these things are very important mm, just be careful after that here you have to give the value so if i just click here we have set up the value previously so here it will be e-commerce items just select this e-commerce items and similarly the second parameter that we want to track is what the price right here the price so price is basically currency that's why we will give here again currency now how this currency is look like see we have to find our currency things from here there have currency i hope let me find it see here is the currency so our currency is usd so let me copy it from here you can copy it from the resource section also and then just go to your google tag manager and paste it and then here you have to select the value we have set up the value previously in our previous video see here e-commerce currency you have to select it these are the things here one question can arise guys why we are setting up here currency because if we go to the data layer from here see in the data layer in the item section we are getting the name of the product here is the name of the product we are getting the price of the product also but we are not getting the currency the currency can can be usd bdt rupee uh, euro any kind of currency can be so you have to set up what currency you are using that's why we are tracking here our currency but our price we are getting here under this item section that's why we are not setting up any price here because we are getting our price and item name from this items but we are not getting our currency that's why we are setting our currency individually here in another parameter i hope you get idea guys after that we have to set up one trigger just click here trigger and from here select the add to cart option and then here give a name of your uh, tag let's say the name is ga4 server side then add to cart then tag and then just save it let me save it guys so our tag and trigger has been set up now we have to um, submit it let's say the name is g4 server side add to cart and then just publish it so we have done guys in this way you have to set up the g4 server side add to cart you know, event basically i hope you get idea in this way you have to set up these things you have to do these things hello guys in this video i am going to show you how you can set up g4 checkout event so if anyone just check out any product on your website we want to track them in this video i will show you how you can do these things so to do that at first we have to go to your google tag manager to do that at first we have to create one variable so let me go to this variable section and then from here click on new and then here click on variable configuration and from here we have to select data layer variable so let me find where is data layer variable uh, okay you can also search it here just search your data layer variable here you have to select it and then here you have to give the data layer variable name now how will we get this variable name we have to go to data layer again so i have already connected my preview mode and from here we will add to cart some product and then we will check out so 
see i have added some product on my cart now i will go to my checkout section so let me go to my checkout section guys from here and then here we will get one name let me find here check out something then here so if i just click here proceed to check out then i will get the checkout section here i hope i will get something like check out here and this is begin check out so here we have to find this one begin check out guys after selecting this begin check out we have to go to this data layer and now we want to track the checkout right now what we want to uh, track basically we want to track the total value of their checkout let's say here as you can see this person as me i have added some product here total 11,025 usd product so we want to track this total amount that means total how much amount people have added on their cart and total how much amount people have added on their checkout so we want to track these things guys now where we will get it let me find see 11,025 sorry 1125 here i hope you can see now these things are under value right but this value is under this e-commerce right so we have to here add here e-commerce dot this value i hope you get idea guys why we are using here e-commerce dot value because we want to track the total amount that a person have added on their checkout and the total amount is this one 1125 right so that's why we want to get this information on our google analytics for dashboard that's why we will track this value i hope you can see this value but this value is under e-commerce see if i scroll up this value is under e-commerce so that's why we will copy this e-commerce let me copy it and then let me paste it here and then just give it a small dot and then we have to find the value so let me find the value and copy it and then paste it here so e-commerce dot value these things we have to add here and then here give a name let's say the name is ga or server side checkout variable and then just save it so our variable has been created guys now we have to create one trigger so if i go to this trigger section and then just click here on this new and then give a name of this uh, trigger let's say the name is ga4 server side check out and this one is trigger and then here we have to configure the trigger just click here trigger configuration and we have to set up one custom event select the custom event and here we have to give the event name now what is the name of the event here see the event name is begin checkout right so we have to copy it from here just copy this begin checkout things and then here just paste it so our trigger has been created and then save it so we have created our trigger and previously we have created our variable our variables and triggers are ready now we will create our text so now go to the text section let me go to the text section click on new and then here give a name of this tag ga4 server side checkout tag and then uh, configure the tag here select uh, google analytics ga4 event and then here we have to configure the tag our con tag was this one that we have been saved previously ga4 server side page view and here and this same configuration tag we are using every time right and then here we have to give the event name now what is the event name that we have copied previously the event name is begin checkout so if i copy it again and then if i paste it here then the checkout will be um, sorry then the event name will be um, pasted and then now we have to add some parameter here and in this case in case of checkout we have to add three parameter basically so at first we have to add here items so if i just write here items here 
currency and here will be value why we are um, giving this parameter guys because when someone will add something on their checkout we want to track what items they have been added on their checkout page and what is the total value of this product and what is the currency the currency can be euro the currency can be usd the currency can be rupee bdt anything can be right so and why i am giving here items because here I have items i have written it from my hand but you can also copy it see here items we want to track this product name right because these products are in the checkout page that means the person has been added these products on his checkout so if we want to get this product name then if we get these items then we will also get all the things that is available under these items right so we will also get our product name that's why i am giving here items so if i copy it and then here you can paste it also i have written these things from my hand and similarly they have currency see if i go to the detailer again they are have currency somehow they are have currency i hope uh, i have to find but the thing is in this way you have to um, set up these things so at first we will give here currency and then we will find here value so items we have already set up our item value if i go here and from here see e-commerce items that we have been set up and then currency we have also set up our currency value here this is e-commerce currency that we have been set up previously and value this one is basically this checkout variable so in this way we have to add this three parameter here and then just click here save and oh okay sorry sorry we have to add trigger right so let me add some trigger we have to add trigger here i'm extremely sorry guys we have to add trigger just click here trigger and then select this checkout j4 server set checkout trigger that we have been set up previously so these are the things and then just click here save in this way you have to create this tag for uh, checkout event so these things has been uh, saved guys now we have to submit these things so let me give here one name of the version j4 server side checkout event and then just click here publish then our checkout event has been set up guys in this way you have to set up the checkout event on g4 server side tracking so our this step also has been done and this is the video in this video this is the uh, things that i want to show you i hope you understand this thing if you have any question then you can let me know in the comment section or in the um, question section thank you so much guys hello guys welcome in this video i will show you how you can set up g4 purchase event and by setting up this event we want to track how much purchase i have gotten on my uh, store and see if i go to google analytics 4 see here i am not getting now total revenue but after setting up this purchase event we will also see this total revenue on our google analytics 4 these are the things guys and this event is very important why this event is very important let me show you in our previous video we have set up checkout event right and now we will set up our purchase event so by comparing these two event you can measure how much money you are losing that means let's say your total checkout is 100k usd but your total purchase is 80k 
USD. That means you are losing 20k USD. And if it is for one month, let's say in one month, your total checkout is 100k USD, but your total purchase is 80k USD. That means in one month, you are losing 20k USD. So in 12 months, you are losing 20 into 12k USD, right? So if you set up these two events, now the persons who have check out but who has not been purchased the product you can retarget them you can show them ads and then you can uh, convert them into your customer i hope you get idea and i hope you understand how important to set up these two event so we have already set up our checkout event now we will set up our purchase event so how to do these things we have to go to our data layer similarly so we are already in our data layer if you follow me through the previous video and from here we have to just purchase something let me reload this website just wait guys just let me reload this website and i have already added something in my card let me add some more let's say i'll add this one i'll add this one and this one so this things has been added guys on the uh, card. Now I will go to the card. Let me go to the card from here. Okay, here. Okay, here, let me go to view card. And then here we will proceed to checkout. And after checkout, people will purchase, right? So here, you have to enter the information and then here people have to select the uh, cash out method and then if i click here place order that means i am now placing the order so here we will get uh, some thing i will show you just click here place order and then just notice here I hope I will get some event here for purchasing the product. So see here purchase event. I hope you can see here is the purchase event. So we have to use this event guys to set up our GA4 purchase event. So just select here purchase. Let me select this purchase from here and then this is our event so these are the things and from here we can track a lot of things let's say if i scroll down see here you can track affiliation let's say on your website or on your product you have affiliation you have affiliate marketers and people are getting commission if they get any sale so you can track it you can track the total value from here you can track the tax if you have any tax you can track the tax you can track the shipping card you can also track the coupon on your website if you have any coupon you can track how much discount you have given by using who is coupons people has gotten this amount of coupon you can track total how much was the value total how much you have uh, cutted um, for tax and total how much shipping charge you have gotten from your customers you can basically track these things now you can do these things manually but i have written everything for you here see here e-commerce dot items if you want to track it from here you can do it manually see here this is e-commerce this is e-commerce you have to copy it and then from here you have to copy the items let me find the items here is the items if you copy and paste it in your variable section then you can track the items right similarly if you just copy and paste these things let's say e-commerce dot affiliation so you can track now the affiliation here have affiliation right let me find you see here have affiliation so these are the things you can do it um, by using the data layer but i have written these things in this resource section so that it can be more easy for you. I'll just copy and paste this thing because uh, to set up this purchase event, it's a little bit complicated and, and the process is a little bit uh, longer than our previous you know, events. That's why I have written all the things here. I'll just copy and paste these things. But I hope you get idea guys, this information I have collected from this data layer. So these are the things. Now 
I will go to the tag manager and from here I will create variable at first just click here variables and then click here on this new and then here I will just copy and paste here see detail error variable I have written these variables we have to set up so here is our name let me copy it from here so I will copy it again guys let me copy it again and then go to tag manager and here give the name of the uh, variable and here set up the value here is the value just copy it and then here uh, select the data layer variable here data layer variable and the variable name will be this one and then just save it and they're saying that the container already has a variable with this name please choose a different variable name okay so we have to um, change the name guys i'm extremely sorry here let's here will be e-commerce purchase items so these things i hope you get idea so we are done now we can save it so it has been created so let me change it from here also so that you don't need to change it again so here will be e-commerce purchase items after that we have to set up another um, variable just copy this variable name from here and then here click on new and then here paste the variable name here set up the variable and here we have to select data layer variable here we have to give the variable name let me get the variable name from here this one is our variable name let me copy it and then paste it and then save it so it has been saved also again let me set up the third one just copy this one dlv ga4 e-commerce affiliation and then copy it and then here click on new paste the name and then set up the variable select data layer variable here we have to give the variable name so our variable name is e-commerce dot affiliation and then paste it here so we are done now save it after that again go to here and we have to set up our fourth one dlv j4 e-commerce purchase value let me copy it so here i'm not sure why i cannot copy let me select it again and then now let me copy it and then click on new paste the variable name click on variable configuration click on data layer variable and then from here let me copy this one e-commerce dot value and then paste it and then save it after that go to the resource section again copy this one dlv j4 e-commerce tax by which you can track tax if you have any tax in your website and then paste it click on variable configuration click on data layer variable and let me find the name e-commerce dot tax just copy it and then paste it here and then save it here so it has been saved guys after that go to the resource again copy this one dlv ga for e-commerce shipping by using this you can basically uh, track the shipping charge also just click here new and then paste the variable name here click on variable configuration click on data layer variable and then copy this e-commerce dot shipping and then paste it here and then save it after that uh, copy this dlv ga4 e-commerce currency so by using these things we can track the currency basically so let me click on this variable configuration select data layer variable and then copy this e-commerce currency and then paste it here okay and then save it and then we have the last one dlv j4 e-commerce coupon if you have any coupon on your website you can track the coupon users also just click here new 
and then paste the name here and then here e-commerce dot coupon and then here click on variable configuration select data layer variable and then give the name e-commerce dot coupon and then save it so our variable setup has been done guys so what we have done as of now basically we have sent this data let me show you again we have sent this data basically from our data layer to google tag manager these are the things guys i hope you get idea uh, to make this process easy i have written all the things here but if you want you can also get these things from the data layer so these are the things we have set up our variables now we have to create on trigger just click here on this trigger section and then click on new give a name of the uh, trigger let's say the name is ga4 server side um, purchase trigger and then here click on trigger configuration we have to select a custom event and then here we have to give the event name now event name is here guys purchase right so let me copy it from here purchase the event name and then i'll just paste it here so these are the things then just click here save our trigger has been created also and the last step is to create this tag so just go to this tag section let me go to this tag section click on new and then here give a name of your tag let's say the tag name is ga4 server side purchase tag and then here click on tag configuration select google analytics ga4 event and here we have to give the configuration tag which is this one we have saved it previously and then event name we have to find event name is our purchase right so let me copy this event name and then go to google tag manager and here paste the event name after that we have to set up here event parameter now how many parameter we have to set up here see here we have added how many variable one two three four five six seven eight so we have added here eight variable right so for eight variable we have to set up here eight parameter that's why i will add here eight row let me add here eight row so we have been add here uh, eight row and now we have to just add the parameter name and value i have also written these things for you just go to this resource and see here is the event parameter and event name at first we have to copy these items you can get these things from the data layer also to make it easy i have written it here and then here we have to select the um, value the value name is glv ga4 e-commerce items or e-commerce purchase items in our case because um, we have gotten one duplicate name right so this, it, it was this one e-commerce purchase items and then we have to get this transaction id let me copy it and then paste it here and select the value the value was this transaction id after that here copy this affiliation and then go to google tag manager paste it in the event parameter and then here select the value affiliation or is the affiliation this one right e-commerce affiliation after that copy this value and then copy it and then go to google tag manager paste it here in the parameter section select here the value where is the value see this one is purchase value so these are the things after that copy the tax again go to google tag manager paste it here select the value from here or variable from here let me find the tax variable here is the variable and then similarly you have to copy the shipping option and then paste it here and then set up the variable let me find it this one e-commerce shipping and then the next one copy it currency so let me click it and then let me paste it here and then let me set up here e-commerce currency
select the e-commerce currency and here I have see two um, variable we have created this variable to use in the purchase section see here currency is lowercase but the currency c is uppercase here and we have created this uppercase uh, currency variable for another use case but in this case to set up the purchase event we have created this lowercase um, e-commerce currency that's why i'm selecting this one and then just copy this coupon from here and after copying it let me copy it again guys i'm extremely sorry let me copy it again and then paste it here and then set up the value and the value is here e-commerce coupon so we have done guys in this way we have to uh, set up the parameter and after that we have to now set up the trigger so just click here trigger and then here we have to select this purchase right ga4 server side purchase trigger so just select it and then save it so we have done our tracking almost guys we have set up our j4 server side purchase tag as of now but before ending it we have to submit it right so just click here submit here give a name of the version let's say j4 server side um, purchase purchase and then publish it so in this way you have to set up the j4 purchase event i hope you get idea guys and our this step has done also so in the next video i will check if the tags that i have been set up in this video are right or wrong so these are the things i hope you get idea these are our full e-commerce tracking you can track anything basically by using this procedure you can track anything i have shown you some important event but the thing is you can track any type of event that you want and that is available on the data layer you can track everything by using this same method i hope you get idea guys thank you so much for watching this video Hello there. After a lot of days, I'm again recording this course. And in this video, I will show you uh, how uh, the reporting will be look like. Our major events we have been set up already. See, these are the major events that we need in our e-commerce uh, website. If you need more event, then don't worry. The process is same. You have to just get access of your data layer, and from the data layer, you have to get the event name and then you have to connect it on your google tag manager so i hope any type of event you can set up now but our major events are these events guys see this page view event then view item event checkout event then add to cart event purchase event these are the events that clients need basically and that business need basically these are the things and we have been set up these events here you will see all your event list here i'm in this home section of my google analytics see page view event session start fast visit user engagement add to cart view item begin checkout these events are tracking and from here you can see the statistics for last seven days last 28 days 
see this is for last 28 days and this is for last 90 days it can take some time to load see these are the statistics for last um, 90 days and see we have gotten some revenue in these days and this is total number of user and total number of visitors that i have gotten on my website and to see more detailed reporting just go to this report section and here you will see detail reporting guys see these are the detailed reporting you can see uh, this type of graph your total revenue your total number of visitor you can see real time visitor um, details from here also you can see the countries from where you have gotten your visitor and then you can see user activity and these things you can explore basically but in this video the thing that i want to show you guys in case of e-commerce you need which product people are buying more and more right so these things you will get in this monetization section from this monetization section go to this e-commerce purchase and here you will see the data which products people are adding on checkout page which products people are adding on their add to cart but not buying you will see all the details from here see here are the product name for my website these products people are buying see this first one people are buying uh, more see 10 view item 4 add to cart and cart to view rate is 100% e-commerce purchase is 2 and purchase to view rate is 100% item purchase quality is 3 and total item revenue is 1000 50 usd and here i can see my total revenue from here so these are the things i hope you get idea guys from this dashboard now we can see all our events that we have been set up so our events are um, appearing here that means our process are right that means um, using which process we have uh, set up our um, events that is correct so in this way you have to set up your Google Analytics for server side tracking for your business or for your client's business. I hope you get idea guys. These are the complete tutorial in case of WordPress and in future I have plan to create um, some video how you can do this Google Analytics for server side tracking in case of Shopify also. But I'm not sure whether I will create it or not but I will try my best if I can manage my time. But the thing is you have to just connect the data layer of shopify right if you can connect the data layer of shopify no matter is it shopify or wordpress can be any kind of platform it can be wix it can be shopify it can be wordpress you have to just get access of the data layer and if you can get access the data layer of the platform where you are working you can just use the data layer information and then you can track the things by using google tag manager right so no matter which platform you are using don't worry don't be afraid just get access of your data layer or get access of your platform's data layer and if you need you can google it you can youtube it let's say how to enable the data layer of shopify how to enable the data layer of wix how to enable the data layer of wordpress.com and then get the idea and then enable it then you will be able to track any type of event that you need to track basically i hope you get idea these are the complete course and if you think and this course is helpful for you then please consider give me a rating and i hope it will be a good rating and if you think i need to improve anything guys then also let me suggest it where i can improve more so that it can be more helpful for you thank you so much guys for doing this course i'm very happy to teach you these things and it's very important from the next year this google analytics for server side tracking will boom everyone will need it and i hope you will make some very good money if you um, give this type of service to your client also it will be helpful for you if you do it for your own business thank you so much guys again for watching these videos